Good afternoon. Welcome to live webinar with Admiral Markets. My name is Chris. Thanks for joining today. We're going to take a look at strategy webinar. Intraday breakout and bounce trading is the focus. First of all, don't be aware that this video uh, and, uh, of course, live webinar right now is shown to a global audience but may not be suitable for everyone. Please visit AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact an appropriate entity for more details on that. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. Great. So as always, very good practice to look at the calendar and take a look what's going on and uh, perhaps take a look at our analysis, technical analysis. You can see that then I was talking about the dollar yen keeping bullish continuation patterns. You can take a look at wave analysis two in the mornings, typically around uh, 6, 7 a.m. UK time. Calendar is showing you important events, red tagged events, medium events, low impact events, but still it's good to be aware of them and to, to know uh, how that impacts your strategy. ADP is behind us about uh, almost two hours ago with very strong numbers. Let's see how that impacts Friday. I believe the NFP figures are coming in from, from the US. So that's always a good. Let's head over to the charts now and take a look what's going on. And take a look if there are any uh, intraday breakout or bounce uh, trades left for the New York session. All right, so we got pound USD basically bouncing off the S1. Yesterday we talked about that. That price might be uh, at a balancing spot <clears throat> that it could either go sideways and continue to break lower or maybe rally up to the pivot point and then uh, bounce from there. Now, yesterday price just went sideways, as you can see here, just going flat and eventually making the break to the downside. So anyone who took the break of that flag uh, was able perhaps to get some 55 pips at the very max if you had the ideal entry and exit. So 30, 40 pips perhaps they're available for that breakout. Uh, this is typically what we are looking for for a a light correction, right? This is going sideways. It started off maybe fast, three candles, but then went went sideways. So that's typical for a correction. If you get typical movement, momentum candles, you'll have typically three in a row. Or maybe not necessarily exactly three in a row, but it does happen often. Uh, I also said yesterday that if price hits 122.50, that a bigger retracement is probably likely. So we didn't get there at all, 122.10, and price went sideways like this. So this is typical for a, a correction at this moment. Right, and then this is a pattern correction, and we said that if correct, a pattern correction like that breaks, it's a good breakout. At this moment, price is struggling at the S1. They are there is a strong bullish candle, but after that, there's a bearish candle and a doji. So this could be a hook back actually for more downside potentially, uh, and it, it could it could appear that uh, we might get one more lower low. Now there is one thing to be aware of. This is already I think triple or quadruple divergence. So that's the only thing that is a bit scary with a bounce trade in here is the fact that you know there's that much divergence on the one hour chart. Let's take a look at the four hour chart and see how that looks like right there. <clears throat> here we don't see any proper divergence. We do realize that there could be divergence between these bottoms but that's an hourly divergence. <clears throat> All right, so that is a bit of a, the annoyance with trading the hourly chart. A lot of wicks here on a 50-minute chart. Therefore, I might just skip it. But in, uh, in theory, in general, if it weren't for the quadruple or triple divergence, I think there's a good chance that this could be a hook back for more downside. Um, but, you know, at this point, it might be a bit risky because of, the, of that divergence. We do have some three candles here it could be a zigzag still up to to that resistance right in here i would rather wait because of the divergence but yesterday was a good you know breakout continuation that we discussed uh, as well let's take a look at your dollar 
All right. Yesterday I was talking about this fib, very important fib, that uh, basically here I would like to see price make an upside and then a flag for a breakout or basically see price get back to the deeper fibs like the 61 or the 78.6 fib. Awkwardly, it kind of missed the 78.6 fib by just a few pips. <clears throat> here you can see about 10 or so, 9, 8. Unusual, but uh, we do see the price respected the fibs earlier here at the 38, uh, the 50, and the 61.8 fib. So all in all, not bad. And this is pretty choppy and correction, corrective compared to these five, uh, five waves. So I think that we're looking at a potential uh, bounce and breakout to the upside on, on the euro dollar, and I think that nothing has changed for the moment. This is a pretty sturdy resistance trend line. You can draw it like this. We can draw it like this. Uh, all in all, I guess it's saying the relatively the same thing. That resistance is right at current price. Price is hitting right at it. So uh, one way would be to trade it right now. This is a wick right here, so there's a bit of a reaction to it. But the stop loss still has to go at least below the 88.6 fib, if not below the bottom. Alternatively, and that might be even a bit better, is to wait for a bullish candle to, to basically close above those resistance red lines, close above these tops here, have a decent sized candle on an hourly chart. I think a candle of about yeah 25 is a, pips is a good good sized candle for an hourly 25, 35, 40. Those are all fine. So if price manages to get up to 105.75, 105.80 around here, we have those blue lines, and it closes near the high like this, this particular candle would be a good breakout candle. I think it could be worth trading later today or early tomorrow. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think that's a pretty uh, decent uh, uh, breakout potential. And uh, we could see the end of this correction, this choppy downside, and a continuation of this particular momentum to the upside. Another confirmation could be five to six candles not breaking this low, for instance. So if we have, for instance, this is one, two, so if we have another candle like this, and then another fourth candle, and the fifth is bearish, and the sixth is bearish, but the seventh is a doji, then seven candles are not breaking this bottom. That could be another bouncing spot for upside as well. So those are all things that I'm keeping an eye on. Or three bullish candles, for instance. This Not only this breakout candle, but another bullish candle and another bullish candle like this. And then we get a, a bull flag like that. That could be another way of trading the breakout too. So there could be a couple of ways that I might look at myself for catching this breakout to the upside. If price does not break to the upside, it is possible that it might still hit the 78.6 fib. Use that as a bearish bouncing spot. It's not something I would trade at this moment, personally, uh, due to the wick and due to this momentum. But it could happen, and if it does get to the 78.6 fib, it is a bouncing spot, and I would be um, interested in looking for bullish engulfing candlestick pattern at the 78.6 fib. All right, dollar, yen. One second, folks. <clears throat> there we go. So basically, I saw this as an impulse momentum, and I was looking for price to go down to the 50 or 61.8 fib. And uh, yesterday, I was talking about the fact that it could use this fib for a bounce down like this. So it did bounce, bounce down. It did uh, basically... Uh, correct. Indeed, this was a correction. So that was all good. Uh, however, I said that I'm not a big fan of trading this breakout of the channel to the downside uh, because of the fact that the, the weekly pivot point is so close by. And maybe now you understand why I was a bit hesitant with trading uh, corrections like this. Because corrections have the, the problem that 
they might bump into support a bit earlier than you expect. And that happened in this case. I definitely thought that the price could get down to the 50. And it didn't. It didn't break the, the pivot point, <clears throat> the weekly pivot point, and turned earlier than I expected. So that's sometimes, you know, it's, it's good normally. In many cases, uh, my targets are, my, my uh, retracements are accurate. But sometimes, you know, you kind of push your luck maybe too much. And I'm a bit, you know, in this case, aiming for a very precise level, the 50 fib, and price turned earlier. And that's a bit of the risk that can happen if you really want to catch uh, a good entry spot, the best entry spot perhaps, then you run the risk that price turns earlier and you miss the boat. And that sometimes happens. And that what happened with dollar yen. In fact, we had a double bottom. I did not catch that double bottom. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and, um, you know, in this case, did not, was not able to, to catch it, miss this, this particular small consolidation. Otherwise, I was maybe still able to trade that part, uh, but I wasn't behind the chart. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, uh, one thing was the fact that I had a plan, but the price didn't go there. Second was that I realized that the plan might have been needed to change, but then I wasn't buying the charts. And that's happened sometimes, of course, if you're looking at market orders, that you might just miss it because you're just not looking at the charts for that particular hour or whatever. So now why did I change my mind here about the upside potential? And that has everything to do with three bullish candles like this. Typically, if you got a good three bullish candle run like that, uh, you know, that is, a, is often a sign of, a momentum continuation or momentum start. Now, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> it is not a guarantee. And you need to have it in context with, you know, other confluence tools that, you know, make sense for you that that is indeed the start of momentum. Not all three bearish candle or bullish candle patterns will lead to huge momentum continuation. Uh, but if you... If you analyze the charts and you think that there's confluence and you have you know, other reasons to look at the chart for a, a start of momentum, then this could often be a, a good clue, a good starting spot for that. The 30-minute chart, too, you see here uh, a good run like this, for instance. So for me, this is not a correction. This formation like this is not a correction. And if anything, it looks more like a, uh, a start of momentum. So when I... You know, if you're looking for candles like this, still to reach the 50 fib, then that's not likely to happen. And that's what I was thinking at the time. But I didn't want to trade it right then. I was looking for a consolidation zone like this, for instance, on the 50-minute chart or the 5-minute chart to trade it to the upside. So those are methods that are possible. Three candles like this, uh, waiting for a 50-minute bull flag, as I often talk about. Five to six candles not breaking the low would have been this particular candle. So that's the same as three bullish candles, in fact. So, you know, looking for intraday breakout and bounce trades, those are often the techniques I use. Candlestick patterns, three three candles in a row, uh, looking for chart patterns on the, on the lower time frame, looking for uh, five to six candles, not breaking a higher low, and anticipating a bounce. And uh, yeah, those are typically, it's very much price action oriented. When I look for breakouts or bounces, very much focus on candles, momentum, and candlestick patterns, and just typically looking at, at candles themselves and, and the relationships they have between each other. So yeah, three candles in a row, five to six candles not breaking a low, and looking for, for patterns on lower time frames. Those are all good stuff. All right, so at this moment, as you probably guessed, price is right at the top. So it could be a bouncing spot, for instance, that price might make a correction. It's possible. We do have an hourly candle like this. But from my perspective, considering this four-hour candle, I think it's a bit too too early to, uh, to consider uh, you know, a double top or... A bounce spot at this point uh, so I would not touch it at this point at this moment it's just 
too unclear. It could bounce, it could break, and I don't. I wouldn't want to. I don't have any particular favorite at this moment for this particular currency. So I'm not looking to trade it at this point. Uh, but anyone who traded it here or or even at the double bottom uh, did well. Anyone who's looking for the 50 fib, unfortunately that those things happen. Price just did not reach its kind of its retracement target for the moment at least. And that's the uh, disadvantage of reversal trading. Um, and that's one advantage of looking for with the trend setups because you can be a less a bit less precise with with the trend setups because typically then price should go our way um, without being that precise. With reversal trades, you got to be more precise because stuff like this can happen and price could just turn around and just go massively against your reversal position uh, in very quickly. Uh, and it might hit you before you know it. That's always a bit tricky with reversals. So not interested in the dollar yen at the moment. For me to be interested in the dollar yen again, uh, I would probably need to see price at the 50 fib. But if today's candle closes this strongly with a close near the low, uh, sorry, close near the high, for me to be... I would probably be interested in longs tomorrow if there's a smaller retracement of today's candle. And I would expect a, a follow through to the upside. So more for tomorrow at the moment. Pound USD, I was hesitant because of the triple divergence, so I'd probably rather wait for uh, a new new pattern, which is a shame because the S1 did look good. But okay, that's okay. R and the euro dollar once again looking for 78.6 fib or breakout three candles or five to six candles giving a hook back here. All right, so those are the majors. Yesterday we talked about the Aussie and how this candle is dominant at the moment. And if that yes, if yesterday would have a daily candle with a sizable wick, uh, at least if I remember correctly, two thirds uh, is wick, then that could be a short signal it might retrace part of that candle I said yesterday like this and then it should continue so looking at that yesterday's candle did anyone by any chance trade the Aussie is anyone in a short at this moment the high and the low is about 57 pips the close is Uh, 50, 11, 11 out of 57, 11 pips body out of 57 wick. So that's about 20%. That's definitely less body than, uh, you know, than 33. I was looking for two thirds wick. The wick is actually 80%. So what was required was a 67% wick. If I remember correctly, yesterday's my trading plan for yesterday that I explained in the webinar, we actually had an 80% wick. Uh, so put a candle on that, you know, put a, sorry, put a fib on that daily candle. Uh, look for 38.50 fib, enter around 76. As you can see, price didn't go much higher. Stop loss above that high at 76.35 for about 35 pips. And price has already fallen and hit the target minus 61.8. Uh, 75, 75.25. Uh, area so price has hit the target anyone still in that trade might close it right now we're still hanging in for a bit more pips let's take a look at the hourly <clears throat> could put a stop loss above for instance last hour's high or above the dominant candle to lock in those uh, those pips and this is the head and shoulders we talked about yesterday as well and that happened yesterday price was about here so you had that consolidation zone as you can see and then boom a breakout to the downside so at the moment price is still breaking actually I'm not sure if it's interesting right now let me check
Let me move this fib. Sorry, this is incorrect. There we go. Uh, I would probably have to see a 15-minute pattern at the moment. Price has pushed quite far and has hit the main targets for, for the day probably. So I would probably need to see, uh, myself would need to see some, yeah, bit bigger correction at this moment. Let me put on the the pivot points as part of the MetaTrader 4 Supreme Edition. A lot of extra tools and indicators, as you can see here. Not only uh, the pivot, but also Keltner, also mini chart, also Renko, also order history. A lot of extra things. Yeah, definitely we can take a look at gold. By the way, certainly let me just finish this this Aussie. And prices hit the S2. So it's not at a great spot, folks, to be honest. It is, this is daily fib, I think. So I would leave it be for the moment, I think. That was a good trade though yesterday. Uh, Kiwi surprisingly bearish, keeps pushing very strongly. Was at an interesting bouncing spot, but what did it do? It just went sideways. So one of the things you can keep an eye on is just looking at these particular candles, right? How does price react to the S1? And if we, can't, if we see candles like this, none of these candles, none of these bullish candles are have any decent size. On the hourly chart, look at these bodies. These candles have five pip bodies, four pip bodies. Those are not good, bullish, strong, bullish candles. No. If it's four or five pips, it's not a strong candle, right? So we're looking at at least 25 pips on the hourly chart, I would say, as a minimum. But therefore, obviously, four or five doesn't count. These are small corrective candles. And if you get a lot of those in a row like this, uh, you know, that is typically a correction. So price is responding weak at the S1, and there's no clear bullish bounce at the S1, which means that price is going sideways. And if you look at the momentum that uh, occurred prior to that sideways movement, it is clear that there's a good chance of a bearish breakout and continuation. So that's a typical uh, yeah, bear flag pattern within a downtrend. And uh, that's what happened. Price turned and continued lower and it's falling as we speak. So those are good examples of breakouts that happened a few hours ago, yesterday, during Asian, uh, etc. Uh, problem is that price at this moment has made that movement already. So what rests, I think, at this point is probably to let this daily candle close. If it closes near the low, <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised to see one more bearish uh, bullish bounce and one more retracement to test uh, yesterday's or today's high in fact tomorrow does yesterday and this is all basically part of a strong bearish momentum on the daily chart strong bearish candles that's just one one piece so far all right so let's see how far this can push it still has space to the s2 and this bottom. That could be a heavy, heavy challenge for price to break through, but it, let's see how it responds. We will be able to see it. We just need to be aware that uh, basically that, um, um, yeah, if price, well, first of all, if price gets there, it's, it's a heavy bouncing spot because it has already traveled a lot of pips. So there's a good chance there'll be a reaction. Um, now I forgot my train of thought, but that's one thing. The bottom, the second is that the price, if it does close near the low, uh, it is basically breaking S1. So a retracement, there's a good chance that it could fall to the S2, especially if it breaks and stay, sorry, especially if it stays below yesterday's and today's low. All right. So I think we are in bearish territory, 
but now is not a good moment because I think that this daily candle uh, is more or less formed at this moment. The main thing I want to see if it can close in your low and maintain its control, if the bears can make control uh, basically of this day, can they keep uh, the close near the low, then they have control. If they can't keep the close near the low, then they actually lost control. And who knows, this could even start to look, if it is something that ends bullish, it could look like this. And you have a bullish pin bar. So that's why it's very important to understand that at this moment, I think, in this particular case, it's just better to wait for the daily candle to close. We'll, have, we'll either have a bearish continuation signal or uh, perhaps a bullish reversal signal. All right, dollar cad. Yesterday we we're looking at this particular spot, double top. That price was not probably going to break double top, and that it could retrace back to uh, one of these fibs. Now it did retrace, but not to those fibs. So I didn't get my retracement discount entry within the uptrend that we saw yesterday. And it has to do with the fact that price just did not retrace deep enough, did not retrace as far as I would like to see, and that happens sometimes when the trend is strong. It did correct a bit there, so it was good to avoid the long in here at least, but eventually the price did continue higher. So I missed that personally. Uh, we'll take a look at the other non-dollar pairs in just a second. Let's take a look at gold. Rohan is curious about gold, so let's take a look at that. So gold is making basically at this point, as far as I can see, uh, five waves up, a ABC correction down, and I think that this could be the start of a new uh, and third move up, at least, on the gold. So let's take a look at this. Good momentum to the upside. So on the daily chart, falling pretty fast. Let me put a fib from here to here and from here to here. All right. This could be a, a bullish bouncing spot. Now price did break through the S1 pretty strongly. And look at yesterday's candle too. You see, that is a very good um, indication of a break, a breakout. And the reason has everything to do with the fact that the close is near the higher low. So if you have a close near the low, as price approaches a strong support, or if you have a candle close that's near the high, as price approaches a strong resistance, if it does close near the higher low, and it's a sizable candle, then there's a good chance of a break because it's indicating momentum. So price will often push through that support or resistance. Uh, this is a classic example, very good example. Price near low, strong bearish candle, or not, not strong, but at least a normal sized candle and a strong close. So, and look, price just broke through it. So when you look at support or resistance and you're estimating whether price will respond to that, try to gauge the, the candle, the vibe of the candle to understand whether price is responding and reacting to the support or resistance or whether it's just blasting through it. Looking at the close of the candle versus the higher low is an important part of my trading. And you can see this is one of those examples where price closed near the low and just kept on pushing after a small low retracement here, as you can see. At this moment, I think price is at the 38.2 fib. So let's see how price will respond there. At the end of the day, I will know how price responds to this fib I think it could be a bouncing spot and price might hook back to the weekly pivot, the 61.8 FIB, and then continue down towards the minus 272 target and 50 FIB confluence or the minus 61.8 and 61.8 confluence and then bounce back up. That's what is what I'm expecting. I'm expecting price to basically make up here. It already did that. Make a zigzag like this and then continue back upwards um, like this. All right, at least towards these targets, if not further and beyond that spot. That's my main uh, analysis at the moment. But price will, will you know, tell. Price will let us know if, if that plan can, can indeed happen. Part of that has to do with how price responded to 38.2 FIB. If the close is near the low, 
then that chance that it will bounce up back to the, the weekly pivot point is decreasing and it might move down right away to the 55th or the S2. So that's something um, that I think at the end of today I will have a better idea about. Now Euro Yen, Pound Yen uh, also bounced up because of the Dollar Yen. And uh, the this is something I think we talked about. Uh, does anyone remember yesterday talking about the Euro Yen by any chance and the fact that it could make a three wave move down to about this zone in here? I'm not 100% sure I said this. I think Rohan is saying yes and towards my question here. Is that correct, Rowan? Are you answering uh, my question, or was that something from uh, uh, connected to gold? Okay, great. I wasn't sure. Perfect. So, great. So you, we got a three wave like this down to weekly pivot point and the previous um, bottom and the thirty-eight point two fib, and pretty good reaction from that as well. So problem here at this moment unfortunately it's not just not a good spot not a good moment for a webinar and that's something we can't know uh, beforehand unfortunately uh, this is again I think too close to this top it could be a bearish bounce don't get me wrong uh, it could be but considering the upside vibe for me the hourly pin bar is not enough I will keep an eye on this four hour chart and uh, I think personally if this is a bullish candle we got three bullish candles in a row I think that if we get a, a bull flag here on the hourly chart, it could be good for tomorrow for one more push-up. If this candle ends up bearish, that might change things, in my opinion. So, because a bearish candle on the four-hour chart, right at this level, well, I think that could change the dynamics here. Uh, I still am a bit respect have respect for this strong bullish candle to be honest so I think in this case I'd rather have five to six candles not break this top hook back like this and that could be a bounce trade I'm a bit skeptical about the bounce trade at this spot so not a good spot I think to trade it either way because there's strong momentum to the upside but also prices at a resistance spot but let's dive in very quickly about today so today I was talking yesterday I said okay you know this is correction momentum if it makes it down here it could be a good bouncing spot so how could one catch a bounce like that it's possible by waiting for instance for five to six candles so this is one two three four five this is the sixth candle that's one way stop loss below the bottom other way, I talked about it, three bullish candles in a row typically is a good start of momentum like this. So that would be the turning spot right there. And last but not least, on a 50-minute chart, lower time frame, or five minutes, even 5.15, right? To look for a consolidation pattern. So right here. All right, fib on that, maybe on this part. And the bounce should happen at uh, one of these fibs. It's, if it is a wave four, if you don't use waves, then, um, you know, then you just look at the fibs like that. But, you know, it should not break below this particular bottom. And if you're not trading it at the fibs, of course, a trigger at the fibs is also possible, like this, for instance. Three candles at the 38.2 fib. Five to six candles would be here. That's a bit late in a way, but okay. Um, and engulfing twin right there. But that's a five minute chart, so it's maybe not as good. But you get my point, I think. Another way is to wait for the break of the top.
and the top in this case uh, is a bit high you know the top has not been broken but um, okay that would be the last thing to look for uh, a break of this trend line with like a candle like this is a good breakout as well candle need to, need to close a decent sized candle I think we're looking at about 25 pips probably yeah 27 as you can see that's okay that's a good breakout candle Clo candle need to close need to low so that could be one way of trading the, the trend line break as well with a stop loss either below the low or below the candle and price is on its way so there are a couple of ways to trade it uh, the bounce it's three candles right here five to six candles right there uh, patterns on lower time frame the breakout candle itself uh, engulfing twin at the, at the bouncing spot so those are all bounce break spots if you identify a zone uh, you know there are a lot of ways to, to catch it the candlestick pattern three candles the wave the, the, the time pattern five to six candles looking for a flag on the lower time frame uh, and looking for the breakout candle later on last but not least there could be another way of looking for instance for for instance here here you have a top so if you're looking for a break of that top right um, it could either be above it or just below it like in this case price just stopped at the resistance as you can see so whether price stopped right at it or just a bit above it the principle stays the same if you get a consolidation zone right at resistance or you know right at it or just above it it's the same thing I look for a, a flag like that and then typically if flag goes sideways like that it's in a good breakout territory on a lower time frame all right Uh, your odd also bounced at the pivot, but it's approaching the top. So I won't dive into this too much because here too it's the same structure as the euro yen. But uh, ultimately, five to six candles. You see here we didn't have three bullish candles in a row as yet on this time frame, but we did have two, four, five, six candles not breaking this low after this candle closed that could be one way of understanding that hey this correction is over right here and this could be the last candle that basically is, is you know this could be basically the end of that correction and price could be ready for a, a reverse here right reverse back into the into the uptrend Alrighty, so looking at these candles, by the way, I would not count this candle as one of those three. So just you have three candles in a row doesn't mean that that qualifies. I think this candle is not a qualifying candle. These neither. So I would not say that here's momentum, you know, that qualifies for a start to the upside. But I would say that I would count these four, for instance, right? Uh, because this is a 50 minute chart and you have only a small little doji in between otherwise three decent candles right there you did have five to six candles not breaking this low when you had this curve like this so yeah anyhow let's see if there's anything for right now price is at weekly pivot point Supply demand zone here. Top of the Keltner long to moving average. That could be interesting for something that has not happened a few hours ago, finally. So let's let's analyze that. Quick quick top down approach. Two bearish candles, that's good for the monthly chart.
one, two, three, four, fifth candle. Okay. Strong bullish candle there. Pretty sizable four hour candle. Let's see, we have no strong upside combination of candles on the hourly chart, nor on the four hour chart. This is candle number six at the moment. I'm a bit scared that this could become a consolidation but if this four hour candle does print with the close near the low like this at the weekly pivot point bit of retracement and it could be a good bouncing spot for downside I would not be that ambitious with the target because ultimately I think it could make some consolidation like this first before it breaks out down or up so I would probably be a bit more modest with the target and not aim for a very ambitious uh, breakout here. But it could be a bouncing spot uh, indeed. So that's something to keep an eye on uh, for myself. Uh, regarding the Euro Pound, let's take a look. Yesterday, price was here, small retracement and continuation, nothing spectacular. R1 could, of course, be a bouncing spot. Uh, yesterday was close to it. Now we hit it, and there's a bearish candle there. Divergence between these tops could be running out of steam. So it does make sense. Let's see if there's how price responds when it gets back to the R1. Because if it shows any like wicks here, like this, that could be a, a sign of weakness and there could be a bigger bounce uh, away from this R1 and from this R1 and there could be a, a correction as the Euro pound uh, makes a downside. Doesn't have to be big, it could just be back to simply to the support. If it does break above the R1, then something else is going on and price is definitely sturdier than I expected. Yeah, that's about it at the moment. Let's see, a question from Naivin. Yes, it is, uh, it is being recorded and it is being uploaded. We talked about various ways of trading breakouts and bounces in, um, in basically setups that I was looking for and talked about yesterday afternoon. And we talked about those now, how those played out. As far as I can see, most of them didn't happen or, or no, sorry, I should say, uh, there was a combination of some that didn't happen and some that played out nicely. But today, I don't see anything particularly interesting except perhaps, uh, as discussed now, a, a bounce on the pound out to the downside, uh, a euro pound bounce to the downside. And otherwise, I, I don't see anything at this particular time that uh, would make sense.
Here I'm probably looking for a four hour chart, four hour candle perhaps. Yeah, here for instance, with the dollar CAD, we can see five to six candles, two, four, six candle bullish. Not breaking this low, this correction is probably over. That would have been a pretty decent way of entering the dollar CAD. Although it is close to the stop, don't get me wrong. But the thing was, this was the second attempt. This was just the third. And the second bounce really didn't go too far. So the bounce off of that was really mild. And if price then stops, turns back up, there is a good chance it will break out above the bigger top at that point. So a long at that spot makes more sense than, let's say, longing it here because this is, uh, this is a second attempt um, after a long time ago, so relatively long time ago. So um, not very long, but you can see here the space between that. So, yeah, that is something you can take into consideration as well. Not only the candle close was near high, which is important, but how many times has, has a strong level been tested uh, is, is, some, is a clue too. Now, as price tries to break above these tops, you can even look on a 15-minute chart, look for a, a flag like this, for instance, and look for a continuation. Five to six candles not breaking this bottom here. Uh, but more importantly, probably what I would have done, I didn't look at this one, but um, like this, 38 fib, for instance, like that, staying above the 38.50 fib going sideways uh, is typically a good sign of a continuation. So candlestick patterns, as it breaks on a higher time frame, looking for candlestick patterns on a lower time frame, once again, very good combination. So I've you know, repeated some of these. Methods I use a couple of times just to give you multiple examples. But uh, I think it's hopefully clear. If not, but feel free, of course, to ask me through chat. Uh, I'm going to be... Uh, I'm going to be basically stopping soon. So if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, if the, your dollar... Just to recap and make a, a last review here, if the euro dollar has a good breakout candle, then I think I'm going to look for continuation to the upside. Uh, on the pound, divergence is a bit making me wary of downside at this moment. So I'm on a whole dollar yen. I would be interested in seeing how the four hour especially holds at this uh, previous resistance spot. And I think... Pound out, I'm curious to see how price responds to this pivot point. Eurian and pound yen two, especially Eurian, excuse me, with the, with the previous top, Euro pound two. So those are a bit of the few things I'm keeping an eye on. You know, the market, in my view, not a great spot for breakouts at this spot. Those happened. There could be a few bounces, but I think they're not quite ready yet because there is a lot of momentum in the market. All right. So uh, Eurian, last question here. Eurian of four-hour testing trend line and last week high. Yes, exactly. Uh, I didn't zoom out enough, but you can see good, good spotting from Naveen here. Uh, tops right there. So, yeah, that's something to be definitely aware, uh, wary of, plus the Keldner. So that's why I'm curious indeed how this candle will react to that. If it holds, it could indicate a breakout later today or tomorrow. If it fills and there's a you know, there's a pin bar, bearish pin bar there, could be uh, a bouncing potential. Uh, so something to keep an eye on indeed, definitely. All right. Well, great that you were here for the strategy webinar on uh, breakout and bounces. For more webinars, please check out admarkets.com, not only for webinars, but for articles, uh, and analytics, and for the platform, of course, WebTrader and MetaTrader for Supreme Edition. So I hope to see you in those webinars. Uh
Let's see. Naveen is asking, should we be watching one hour, four hour for breakout? I watch various time frames, in fact. So it's, I don't necessarily only look at one time frame. It does depend on the structure of the market. So in some cases, I'll look four hours, sometimes four hours, sometimes even 30-minute chart. If I'm looking at this, I would probably be looking at an hourly because this is, I think, an hourly correction. So I think an hourly in this case is fine. Um, so the candles, you know, the time frame for looking at candles will vary from my point of view. But it's true. I do think that four hour is a good trend direction and hourly is a good momentum time frame, though. I agree with that, with, uh, with Nenet on that one. All right. So that is true. But the breakout really depends on the structure, the pattern I'm looking in front of me. If it's a huge pattern, let's say, let me go just a bit back here, right? Um, if, I, you know, a pattern, uh, let's see, like this, for instance, this is not an hourly pattern. This is a four-hour pattern or maybe even a daily pattern. So I wouldn't be looking for an hourly breakout in, in this zone, right? Let's look at the four-hour chart now. You see, it's maybe not even a four-hour pattern. It's maybe even a daily pattern. It's it's too 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 large, right? Daily chart, and you see daily chart is maybe the best one, right? As as price makes a consolidation like this, this is maybe the breakout, pretty deep hook back, but eventually some downside after that. So. Anywhere where I can understand the structure, understand the pattern, that's the time frame I want to look for uh, on a breakout too. And, and that could vary um, from moment to moment. As I, as I analyze the pattern, I would choose which time frame I think looks best. Uh, this is going to be uploaded, I think, tomorrow morning because I'm going to send it to Admin Markets, but it's already evening uh, in... Uh, in uh, Estonia, so I don't think that they'll upload it now. I think it'll be tomorrow morning. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining, folks. Wish you a great evening and great trading, and I hope to see you in tomorrow's webinar. Cheers, folks. Thanks.